All right, you ready for it? All right, here you go. You are live. Okay. So, all right, everybody, hold up. I'm bring my camera up. Just stand. Uh, all right, here's, here's our camera. This is looking at the piece where we're straight to the curb with the five bar payload. Uh, I'm going to pick up the camera and show you what this buggy system looks like real quick. Payload on the end right there. This is the real buggy that we're using. And, uh, so we got our laptop set up here that is connected to the and it's used to uh, communicate with and uh, we're what the computer inside the looking at. So here we go back to that. And you can see what the left right now is only running eight of the channels just to see what kind of coverage we get with that. As long as we're going to be going, I think eight channels is going to be more than enough. I've got to uh, I'll leave uh, the camera up. Uh, lost it here. For, uh, it's it's going to the camera's going to be disappearing back and forth as I click on uh, high pack, but I'll, I'll bring it back up as soon as I can. All right, so we're ready. All right, I'm going to start collecting data. I'll bring the camera back up. All right, Jamie, if you can speed up just a little. All right, we got some big dunes coming up, up here on the left. We'll be there in just a few minutes. You can see because the LIDAR is only about, oh, eight feet above the ground, maybe seven feet above the ground, that where the, uh, the dune on the left-hand side, let me get the camera back up. So the dune on the left-hand side is just a little bit higher than the camera, so that's why we're not picking up the flat. So the higher you can get the camera, the better uh, it'll pick up the flaps that are over to the side. So we're getting ready to see these dunes coming up here in a second. There we go, and they're starting to come into play. So that's looking, that's not really good. We're collecting right down close to the water's edge. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna run about 4,000 feet down the beach, turn around, and we're gonna come back where we run really close to the surf line so that we get uh, plenty of overlap and we can see uh, any kind of ridges or formations in the sand uh, that are over by the water that you normally wouldn't pick up doing just normal RTK backpack surveys. Uh, it's kind of hard to see in the real-time cloud window, but if I brought this data into the editor, the tracks that you see that we're, we're going over, those will show up real well inside of the, uh, the editor, and you know we'd be able to pick up and actually contour the, the wheel tracks here. So yeah, if you go a little faster, JB, that'd be great. Woo! 
we're actually picking up over to the, the surf zone, except I can see that there's a little bit of a break over there, probably drops about a foot or more. And we'll definitely pick that up on the next pass when we run there over by the water. So you can see we're getting a real good coverage here. You know, this is literally going to be probably tens of millions of data points once we're complete. It's probably going to take us a total of about 15 minutes to collect this 4,000 foot area. And we're collecting all the way to the tops of the dunes on this side. So we don't have to worry about disturbing the dunes, which is uh, illegal. That's why you, there's these signs on the side of the dunes to, to tell you to stay off because they're native lands up here in Florida. So this, this is another good factor for using the LIDAR. Uh, you're able to get the, the steep pitches. It's going to be really good for determining uh, beach quantities for beach renourishment surveys. You can use a little more left if you want to. So again, we, we'll pick up every little footprint basically in the sand. Uh, these are things that you would never pick up with uh, conventional backpack surveys. And, you know, once you go to editing the data where you've got the people on the beach and everything, um, you know, picking them out and removing them is, is a very simple procedure. Uh, plus, you know, the accuracy of this system is going to be somewhere in the, I'm going to say, three to five, seven centimeter range, uh, which should be more than good enough for a beach type survey because, uh, you know, you've got all these footprints and if you had a busy day of people on the beach, the more they walk, the more they're changing the contours in the sand anyway. So, you know, a three to seven, eight centimeter value should be plenty good enough. Getting close to the jetty up here. We'll turn around and JB, can we get down on that lower beach? Uh, possibly. Possibly. We're, we're going to try if we can so we can scan this bluff wall that we've got over here to our right hand side. You can see the drop off void that it's leaving in the matrix. We'll do what we can. Alright, if you could. Yeah, if we can get down there, that'd be great, JB. Yep. <laughs> now, the one thing about LIDAR is it is color reflective. So any the, the lighter the color, the better LIDAR picks up. The darker the color, the worse the LIDAR picks up. It's kind of like the way uh, a, a white roof on your vehicle reflects the sunlight so that that's just like lidar it's going to reflect it back to the lidar anything that is very dark in color like blacks um, are going to absorb the lidar and you may not get any reflections off of it and go to the left around here yeah if you can get yeah if we can make this happen this would be a great survey Okay, see, the, this is the entrance channel coming into St. Andrews up here ahead of us, the jetty on uh, the left side. Yeah, if we can make it, let's do it, please. I ain't scared. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, walk. Your audience is rooting you on, Joe. Okay, well, it's... it's we got a steep bank here. I don't know if we can. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's rocks. Oh, yeah, but back behind us, yeah. we might be able to get it. Hi. Uh, are doing a live demo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought maybe he didn't want you guys to see him beef it. <laughs> yeah, if, if you take a straight down approach here, JB, you think we can do it? Right. <laughs> oh my God. 
All right, here we go, folks. Watch out. <laughs> All right, here we go. What, no applause from the peanut gallery? Come on. Cheer them on, guys. <laughs> All right, so now we're filling in. So you can really see this berm in the green color of the matrix that we're picking up. And can you imagine trying to collect this data with an RTK backpack? So that this really has some huge benefits to uh, collecting topography type data, and you can do it all in IFAT. You gotta go left, JB, or can you go around here? Okay. They're not scared either. I'd be. All right. Yeah, boy, this, this ledge is looking really good in the matrix. And to anyone out there, yes, we'll make this data set available to you. Okay, this is going to be a trick. Can you get, can you go down in that little, <laughs> that there. <laughs> there we go, we got another little. <laughs> oh, I see what's going on in the base room. Keep going. Sorry, I didn't turn the quick draw feature off in the matrix. That's why it looks so pixelated. Uh, see if I can get that turned off. Okay, we're going to have a little bit of a slant here. Closer you can get to the water after this would be great, JB. You can see we're still all the way over here by the water. Of course, now the Belladon has a range of 100 meters, so we probably could have run right here along this lower end for the very first part of it, and still collected everything over there on the on the dune side with no problem. But we definitely still would have needed two passes on the jetty side where we have that big bluff wall that we just came down. So, you know, we're collecting all the water data here. Uh, so the overlap should be really good. This has been uh, already pre patched tested, and ready to go. Now, where you see the water coming... Oh, sorry, I forgot that the camera was gone. Let me find my mouse. There we go. Now, you, where you see this water here, the water is going to cause a no reflection, and we should get a blank area for the most part uh, in the LIDAR. We'll just have to see how that turns out, because uh, it does not penetrate through the water. It, it may slightly, since this is super shallow, we might actually get a reflection off of it, uh, of the sand below it. But this is not bathymetric LIDAR, I'll tell you that right now. All right, so we got this water here to our right. Not sure how well it's going to pick up anything through it, but it might. It is pretty clear, so it's possible that the light rays got through it. Yeah, so you can see this little berm here on the left-hand side. So, you know, we need to get over to as close to it as possible. Where we are is good. Where we're picking it up and it's sloping all the way down. Again, we're picking all the way to the tops of the dune. So again, 100 meter range. So this is picking up. This potentially has the uh, ability to collect up to about 650 foot, uh, 328 feet to each side. So uh, you know, 650 foot loss. You know, on flat ground, the angle of incidence 300 feet away probably would be the greatest reflection. 
So the higher you can get the laser up, the better the, uh, the data will be further away. The testing we've done so far, and I know Matt Staley with the uh, Corps of Engineers with his backpack unit, I think he'll probably tell you that somewhere in about the 75 to 100 foot range is, is where they uh, get their best data within. You know, and they're on a backpack, so that the, the laser's only probably about five feet above the, the ground. We're about seven feet with this setup. So if you can get it to maybe another three, four, five feet higher, that'll just improve the uh, accuracies and the reflections that you'll get out of the LIDAR. But yeah, so the burn, the, the dunes that are way back there, you can see we, we picked up some of them, but not all of them. So just basically imagine that you can collect a football field to each side of the laser, and that's going to be about 100 yards. So that would be about the, the max range that you can get your good data. So we're going to get real close up here to the, the pier again. We'll make a U-turn at the pier, and then we're going to halt it from there. All right, so we probably got another 200 yards to go, maybe. But again, you know, the, the people will edit out of this real easy. And uh, if we need, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be doing the uh, LIDAR processing. I'll just go ahead and maybe look at this data while we do it. And uh, we'll look at some of the ways we can uh, edit the, the people and features out of this. All right, you know, JB, what we do is we'll, we'll make you turn up here at the pier. And let's just go ahead and we'll just collect going back up out of here. I don't think the matrix will, will carry that far, but we'll still see it in the real time cloud. All right, so we're going to make a 90 degree turn here. We can see the pier. We should see the piling pick up here when we make the turn. There you see them coming in. You play right there. There's the pier. I was picking up the underneath planking of it. All right. So as soon as these people get out of our way, we'll head up the, the walkway. We're gonna have people come to table. We'll just slow down when we get to them or whatever you need to do. We got some folks coming down the walkway, so we gotta slow down a little bit here. Joe, I thought you weren't scared. I'm not scared. I'm not one driving. This is a government vehicle, <laughs> so they have to do their safety. They don't want to have a lost time accident here. Uh, All right, just go ahead, Jamie. We'll stop when they get in line and walk around. Thank you for attending. Sorry it took so long to get it ready set up.